accumulating talent and you're looking for the future. And the Tigers have some good young players. So uh, the Scandalario kid looks really good so far. Uh, you know, I've, I've been very impressed with him. So you're, you're evaluating, you're evaluating a bunch of pitchers. Uh, so you got a job to do, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's still very important. So uh, you can get a lot out of this season, even though, you know, your one loss record is going to take a beating. Justin Verlander was traded a couple weeks ago, Jim. And, and when people talk about the, the, the names that really took the Tigers back into prominence behind Mike Illich, of course, Dave Dombrowski, Jim Leland, Justin Verlander. I mean, it is kind of the end of an era for Tiger fans. What, what were your reactions when he was traded? Well, that's the end of an era, but it's a new beginning, and I think you got to look at the bright side. I mean, if you remember, right, I mean, a lot of the people were saying, hey, you got to tear it down, you got to start over, and then when you do it, sometimes people are upset. You, you can't have it both ways. So I think they did the right thing. I think they're making the right move, and, uh, you know, we hopefully that uh, we're going to have a bright future. So, you know, it's going to take some time, and, you know, people that want to see you win every night, maybe they won't come to the game quite as often, but people that look at it and want to see the young players develop and see what it's going to look like in the future for the Tigers, they're still going to be there. So it's a, it's a testy time for the organization. It's a testy time for fans. Uh, you just hope that they all get together like we did in 2006 and stick behind it and get things accomplished and, and uh, see where it takes you. In, in hindsight, they, you know, they made the trade in 2015 when they got rid of Cespedes and Price and, and got some young players. In hindsight, should they have let that rebuild start then rather than in 2016 they decide to, like, go for it again? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think everybody's so excited. We had such a good run there, you know, and everybody's so excited. felt that they obviously had a legitimate chance. Uh, you know, to continue that. So, no, I don't think so. I think when you get a chance, you go for it. And then when you see that it's not going to happen at some point, then obviously you tear it down. So I, I actually think they did the right thing. We're talking to Jim Leland, the Tiger manager. He's going into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame on Friday night. Tickets available at www.mshof.org. The uh, ceremony will be at the Max Fisher Music Center. I know we talked to you about a month and a half or so ago about Miggy and what you see out of Miggy. Um, ultimately, is it just physical? Is he just not physically right in your mind, or has this been a very distracting year? People have brought up what's going on back in his home country of Venezuela. I mean, do you think we'll see the old Miggy return in 2018? Well, I do. I think he's been hurt for the most part of the year. I think that back has really been an issue for him. And I think, you know, he has been hurt. And I think you'll see a fresh Miggy, hopefully a healthy Miggy. I certainly don't think Miguel Cabrera's done, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, I think you'll see him bounce back next year. And probably have a really good year. Do you, do you think Victor should come back, even if his heart is okay? Well, you know, that's a, that's a tough one because, as Brad said, you know, number one, you got to look out for yourself. I mean, right. you can't do anything crazy. So, uh, you know, that will depend on probably on doctors, how Victor's feeling about it. But, you know, the number one thing here is obviously your health. So, uh, you know, I, that's a tough call right now. I don't think you can make that call right now. You mentioned Brad. I'm not going to ask you whether you think he should be back or not next year. But if you are Brad Osmus, you know, do you even want to come back and deal with, you know, look, they probably won't be very good next year, and who knows how long it's going to take to have another, I don't know, close to 100 loss season on your resume? Or it would be better for you as a young, still a young manager, take a year off and, uh, and get an, a job somewhere else uh, in a year or so? Because everybody agrees that he will get another job somewhere. Well, first of all, I'm hoping that Brad comes back. I think he's done a terrific job under the circumstances, and he's just in a transition. It's a tough transition, and your personal record is going to take a beating. I mean, it killed me in Florida the second year. So, But I think Brad is a perfect guy because he's a young guy. He can work active with the players physically. You know, he's in great shape. He throws BP. He's got a good rapport with the players. I certainly hope that he comes back. Like you said, that'll be a decision that he'll have to make if he wants to take a beat for a little while because they will take a beat uh, when you're playing. We had played 38 rookies in Florida. Uh, that, that second year I was there, it, it just doesn't work. We're talking to Jim Leland here on the Troy Laser Hotline. Jim, when you're managing in this final month of the season, when you're playing like tonight, you play Cleveland, so there's technically still something on the line. Do you manage that game differently than, say, when you play the White Sox where there's nothing on the line? Or do you make sure you put your best nine out there on a night where you're playing a team that's still in competition or still in contention? Well, I think right now you got to look out for your own organization. You have to do whatever you think is going to benefit the Tigers in the future as well as tonight. So I think you're looking at young guys, you're playing guys, you know they're going to have energy, the young players have that. So I think that, you know, that's not really an issue. I think you just play the guys that you think that you want to look at for the future a little bit and you know they're going to compete their best. 
You know, Brad, a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was a week ago, talked about some of the young pitching, and he's specifically about Daniel Norris and Matthew Boyd. And he kind of, I don't want to say call them out, but he said, look, look, these guys got to get it together. They got to they gotta pitch at the major league level. So much, you know, n- no no cushy, no uh, coaching, whatever. Sometimes it's on the pitchers to get better. Do you do you agree with that? Is it, do you have certain players where enough with the uh, the kid gloves, you got to start playing because uh, we're in the major leagues here? Well, I, I agree with that 100%. I don't think he really called them out. I think he just told the facts. Those right. are the facts of life. If you want to pitch and perform up there, then you got to pitch and perform up there. It's that simple. It's not putting pressure on anybody, although there's a certain amount of pressure that goes along with being a big league pitcher or player. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, these guys are getting opportunities, but at the same time, you've got to take advantage of opportunities. And if you don't, somebody's there to take your job. That's what Major League Baseball is all about. Professional sports, that's what it's all about. It doesn't matter. You know, great linebacker supposed to be a great prospect, but he doesn't do it. They find somebody else. It's that simple. What would you say would be the positive to come out of this season, if there is any? Well, like I said, I think Al did the right thing. I think he did a great job. I think the scouts did a great job. You know, time only tells on trades. You know, who knows how it's going to work out. Uh, you can never predict that, but I think he did a great job. Uh, from what I understand, the players are really good. I've heard from three or four other general managers that said that the Tigers really did well. So you just go forward, and, uh, you know, you see how it plays out. Jim, when people talk about your career in Detroit, they're going to remember, you know, what you brought to the table. They're probably going to remember the moonwalk after you guys won the division. They're going to remember, you know, certainly the the Mags uh, home run against the A's to clinch the pennant. Are there... Are there lesser things that stand out to you about your time here? I mean, I'm not going to ask you your favorite player or your favorite team because I'm sure you got a lot of them, but are there moments to you that really stand out during your time here in Detroit? The moment that stands out to me the most is from Mr. Illich on down, we all, we all fought in together, and that's what I tried to accomplish when I got there. Everybody got on board, and I'm, I'm including uh, the person that takes care of the mail in the front office uh, to the general manager to the owner. Everybody bought in. The fans bought in. That's my most pleasant memory. We became a family in a short period of time. And we were a family for a long time. And I still think we have a chance to be a, you know, a great family. So that's the thing that I'm proudest of, is the fact that I really felt like I was a very small part of bringing baseball back to Detroit, bringing the, the roar back into the Tigers. And, you know, let's not forget about all, all those players that we had. They were good. Speaking of a lot of those players, some most of them who played for you, a lot of them are in contention to win the World Series. You got Scherzer, you got... Verlander, Granderson goes on and on. Who are you hoping wins the World Series? Is one of your former players, like if it's Verlander versus Scherzer, Game <laughs> Seven of the World Series, who's Jim Leland pulling for? Well, that, that's a no lose situation for me because whoever <laughs> whoever does it is great. You know, one of one of my former players is going to get a ring, yeah, and that would make me personally happy. It doesn't matter. To be honest with you, it doesn't matter which one gets it. Uh, you know, I mean, you get along with certain guys better than other guys. But at the same time, I mean, you know, we're a team. And we'll always be a team. You know, I mean, that, that's just the way it is. Max Scherzer will always be a teammate of mine, Justin, Maglio, those guys. So, yeah, I wouldn't be pulling for anybody in particular because, you know, you're, like I said, it's a, it's a no-lose situation. It's such a strange sport right now with the fact that the Dodgers, you know, they, they win 15 out of 16. They look like the hottest team ever. And now they've lost 16 out of 17. Is this confounding to you? Well, I think it just shows you how hard it is to win. They were the darlings of baseball. Everybody was talking about them, going to break records and this and that. It's not easy to win games. And you find that out, and I think that's a perfect example. And, you know, right now Cleveland doesn't think they're ever going to lose another game. That's just why I don't think they're ever going to win another one. Hey, Jim, you said you were a small part. You were actually a huge part, and we really appreciate your time. We appreciate what you've done here, and congratulations on going to the hall. Enjoy Friday night. Thanks, Jim. I, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jim. 